Antarctica is a really wonderful place for science, partly because it's so isolated and it's a, a very pristine environment. So we can be fairly confident that the measurements we make aren't contaminated by any of the pollutants that you might find here in the Northern Hemisphere. The brilliant things we noticed when we were there was the sheer exposure of the rocks. For a geologist, it's absolute heaven because where the rocks appear above the ice, you see everything. Um, there's no vegetation, nothing to get in the way. Um, so it's a very sort of clear environment to do science in. Just so wanted to give you a quick tour of our campsite here. These are our tents lined up beautifully. And what we've managed to create is somewhere where you can go to the toilet comfortably. It's got a beautiful view. Toilet roll holder. That's obviously where the poo goes in there. And this is a beautiful, beautiful igloo. Pretty much throughout the night and all day today we've had winds that have been gusting up to about 30 knots. It's meant lots of digging out of the tent and it's meant an awful lot of noise and rattling of the tent through the night and through the day. One of the views I think that has emerged over the last five decades is that science has to think far more carefully about its environmental impact. For the first two or three decades of the treaty's existence, the environmental impact of science wasn't considered terribly important. If it had an environmental cost, well, so be it. The Antarctic is a very large place, and scientists are only found in a limited uh, number of areas. That's changed. 